We're turning carbon into superconductors. Resistance is futile. <laughs> Graphene is awesome stuff, and I know a lot of you out there think the same because we've actually received requests to do an update about graphene. Now this is a sheet of carbon atoms that's just one atom thick. If you were to lay these one on top of the other, you would eventually have graphite, which is the stuff that's in your ordinary pencil. Or if you were to take a sheet of graphene and curl it so its edges met, you would make a carbon nanotube. One of the coolest things about graphene recently is that we figured out how to turn it into a superconductor. A conductor is able to conduct electricity, and some materials do it better than others. Copper cables, pretty good, for example. But a block of rubber isn't. It's an insulator. But even with good conductors, you still lose some electricity because of resistance. A material resists electricity flowing through it, and so some electricity is converted into heat. That means no matter how much electricity you pour into one end of a copper cable, you're never going to get the same amount out the other side. But superconductors are different. They have a zero loss carrying capability of electricity. As much as you put in, that's how much you're going to get out, and there's no resistance. Until recently, graphene was not one of these materials. But back in 2012, some scientists hypothesized that if you were to introduce lithium atoms at careful locations inside a sheet of graphene, you could turn it into a superconductor. And recently, scientists did just that. They were able to make a superconductive sheet of graphene. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is that these materials are operating at very low temperatures. I mean, seriously cold. Just to get the lithium atoms into the graphene, they had to lower the temperature to about minus 265 degrees Celsius. And to turn it into a superconductor, they had to go even colder to minus 267 degrees Celsius. That's wicked cold. But the scientists are hopeful that if we play with where the lithium is placed, we can slowly increase that temperature, turning it into what we call a high temperature superconductor. Keep in mind, these are still incredibly cold temperatures. They're just less insanely cold. So why is this important? Well, for one thing, we might eventually be able to make superconductive nanowires for microprocessors. Electronics and heat don't get on well with each other. As a microprocessor has electricity run through it, its components heat up. That heat can make components expand, breaking connections, causing errors, maybe even causing a complete failure. But superconductors don't generate heat. They conduct electricity perfectly. So if we're able to build microprocessors with superconductive wires, we have amazing electronics that could extend the life of Moore's law. Oh, and the coolest thing about superconductors, in my opinion, is that they eject magnetic fields. Normally, when you run electricity through a conductor, it creates an electromagnetic field. That's pretty basic, but superconductors eject all magnetic fields from the center of the superconducting material, which means if you were to take a magnet and place it over said superconductor, it would levitate in place. We're talking hoverboards, people. All right, I got a question for all of you guys out there. I know some of you are real graphene junkies. You know all there is to know about graphene and carbon nanotubes, so share that knowledge. Tell me, what is the coolest or most exciting thing about graphene that you know? And let me know that in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and join the forward thinking think tank by subscribing to the channel. After all that, check out these other amazing videos right over here.